Uh, so we had International Space Week. No, it was World Space Week, wasn't it? Yeah, So World Space Week. Yeah. yeah. Should be Universe Space Week, really, because it's all in space. That's true. That's true. It's just Space Week. Let's just call it Space Week. Yeah, but is it Space Week in another galaxy where there is other life? Or is their Space Week another week? Do you mean, have they got the same calendar? Yeah. Well, probably not. If they don't exactly. have the same shapes and size solar system, then they'd go around the sun at a different rate and the stars would come up and, you know, God, their, week, their space no. week might be 25 so think, years. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, it was a space, it was a world space, space week, event. Yeah. Um, and so you, you've been into space, because I haven't. I, I've only pretended to be in space on with like green backgrounds yeah. and just going woo like that. But I you've actually... I have really been in space. I've been in the space equivalent zone. Yes. So but then you've also done the weightlessness, though, on Vomit Comet. Oh, yeah, I've done Vomit Comet. Yes, yeah. I recommend that highly. It's the ideal birthday gift. Uh, yeah, How much brilliant. does that cost? Quite a lot. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> sort of thousands of pounds, I think. But, um, but it's good. It's worth it, actually. Weightlessness is great fun. Fairly useless, but um, well, I mean, it's probably quite useful if you're up on the space station doing a very, very important experiment. But if you're just going around and around going, <laughs> it's not really very constructive, mm. but it is funny. And it's called a vomit comet, but did you vomit? No. no. I've never been sick as a result of motion. I've never had car sickness, boat sickness, you know, sea sickness rather. I've never had that, and I, I didn't get it in that. But some people did. And the really tragic thing is that you. When you take off in the Vomit Comet, the back of the aeroplane still has seats in it, mm -hmm. and you strap yourself in like a normal passenger. You fly up to about 50,000 feet, and then you get out, and then you go into the whole weightless routine parabolas. And there were a couple of blokes from Germany who I was talking to before we went on, and we got to altitude, they unstrapped themselves, and they were immediately sick because they couldn't cope with the weightlessness, and yeah. they just had to be strapped back in the seats for the rest of the flight. Is that right? So they paid wow. all their money, but that those were and then the what rules. do they do with all the floating sick that's just well a man a man has a sort of uh so, you know those little nets that you rescue dead goldfish with from mm -hmm. a, it's like a bigger version of one of those and he he scoops the sick because it's that's weightless as well but he does it in a weightless way so he sort of goes that looks quite elegant yeah it is. For, it's for a really balletic. horrible mm. job for a really it's horrible quite, job yeah. of scooping up german carrots from an area in the in the troposphere over california yeah it's mm. Yeah, it's, it's quite good. But I he, always he thought, a bit for some silly. reason, that you know, you'd be forced to just sort of gobble it back up again, weightlessly. But, well, I think but, a polite person would weightlessly eat it again, like a cat or a dog would. But these Germans who got, got well, stuck back in, they had to have it netted up. They had to have it netted up. It's also, the, the trouble with weightlessness is that most people's immediate reaction is to try and start swimming in it. But obviously that, you know, all the Newtonian stuff means that that doesn't do anything. Well, There's not enough mass. You yeah, know, exactly. air is, you, doesn't give you enough yeah, force. You just sort of go backwards and forwards a bit. And um, eventually you just give into it and just roll about floating wherever, wherever weightlessness takes you.